I'm gonna be talking about the differences between the two systems that I have behind me here. This one is the AC300 paired with the B300K batteries, and this one is the AC300 paired with the B300 batteries. And currently, this is two different systems. However, you can pair these two AC300s together to create one system, even though we have B300K batteries here and B300 batteries over there. And a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to connect these two systems together to create that 240 volt system. But this is gonna be a little bit different of a review on the AC300s because I do have two different systems and I do have multiple batteries that are different. But you can hook these up safely if you do it in this manner. And the first thing to know is that you could not put a 300 and a 300K together. You would have to pair it just like this right here. And before we jump into that, I wanna help you get more familiar with the AC300. And we've established that we can create a 240 volt system if we have two AC300s. Now this is a pure sine wave 3000 watt inverter that I have confirmed that the sine wave is absolutely perfect. We have six 20 amp, 120 volt outlets, and we have one 30 amp max outlet that you will connect to an RV or something like that if you're using 120 volts. That's gonna become very important here in just a minute when I do do the 240 volt connection. Up here in the left top corner, we have a 12 volt 30 amp outlet, and then we have a 24 volt 10 amp outlet right there. This is a touch screen, and I just touched it. I will get back to that a little bit later because there's a lot of settings that go into that. Moving over here to the right, we have the DC output. We have a USB-C of 100 watts and a USB-A of 18. And we have two of those under there. And then we have USB-A, five volts, thir or three amps on this side. So that's the different types of USB-As that we have up there. And that covers basically the front of the unit. We're moving over to the side. We'll do it from this one over here we have a solar input MPPT. There's actually two of them in here, so we can hook two solar arrays into this. And the max is between 12 to 150 volts at 12 amps. This port at the bottom is your uh, communication interface, and you'll have to have a cable that would connect this to this one so they can communicate together to create a 240 volt system. On the Back side of this is your uh, expansion battery ports that allows you to connect batteries. So we have the 300Ks over here and the 300s over here. And yeah, I did refer to those as 300K and 300 because the B's in front of all of them. So it just makes it easier to say. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into the differences between the B300K battery and the B300S batteries. The B300K comes in significantly less on cost. This is your best value by far, and I'm gonna explain why. And although Blue Eddy has taken things out of the B300K that they used to be in the B300, like the cigarette lighter, the 12 volt, 10 amp, uh, outlet here and the USB-C 100 outlet and the ability to charge by solar or to charge with AC on the side. That just made the battery more independent and you were able to turn the battery on and off right here, these um, actual ports. But you can still turn the battery on and off on the B300K. You just don't have any outputs that you could turn on and off physically. This will always be on as long as the battery is on. One major difference a lot of people are talking about is that this is 300 and say seven watt hours less or 308 watt hours less than the B300 and the B300S. But if you're talking $600, then 300 watt hours makes no sense to pay 600 extra dollars. And I'm gonna explain why I think this is the best value because we don't need all that other stuff because it's right up here and it's in the 200L or the AC 200L, the AC 200 Max and the AC 500. All have everything that we have in that battery right there up here. So we can control all of that down to the battery. This is just acting as batteries. And I strongly support this move that Blue Eddy's moved into to reduce the cost of the battery and put all the functionality into the inverter itself. So in these configurations, we have roughly 620 watt hours less over here, but we've saved $1,200. We've saved a ton of weight also. Each one of these batteries 
weigh 80 pounds. And if you look at the B300K batteries, each one of those weigh 63.4 pounds. And if space is a concern for you, you gotta take this in consideration. The height of these two batteries are roughly 21 inches, and the height for the B300K batteries is around 16 and a half inches. So that's my argument on the B300K batteries. There are two things that I would like to see updated on the B300K, and that's the black button change back to the chrome button, or if you want a black button on that, to have a black stainless steel of that same button over here. And of course, we'd want to see the USB-C 100 watt or better uh, outlet up here. Other than that, this battery is a much better value than the B300S or the B300 batteries that have been previously offered by Blue Eddy. But don't get me wrong, I use the B300S batteries on my AC500 system. These are great batteries, as well as the B300 batteries that we're gonna be using on the AC300. This is just your better value. And that's just my perspective on the B300K battery. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Leave me a comment below and let me know whether you think the B300K battery is the best valued battery that Blue Eddy is offering right now, or if you would prefer to still purchase the B300 or the B300S batteries. Now it's my favorite part of the video to do the performance testing on the AC300s. Although I haven't done a dedicated review on the AC300s, this is kind of what this video is about. And I wanna put this to a load testing in short Short term and then I'm going to make a video down the road for a long-term testing on this. I'm going to be removing the AC500 and I'm going to be replacing it with the AC300. You'd ask why would you do that? Well it's very important to properly size your solar system. So if you only need 3000 watts then only purchase an AC300. If you need to go above 3000 you need to go up to around 5000 then you need to be looking at the AC500. If you need to go above that then you could be looking into the EP800 that even gives you more power that I have over in my house. And the first thing that you're going to need to connect your AC 300s together is this communication cable. So all you're gonna do is come over to the side, the port that I showed you earlier, plug this one on this side, and then this one over here on this side. And then make sure to fasten it down so it's nice and secure. And now we wanna go over to our settings, and we wanna go over one screen, and you see the machine type is single. So we'll click that, and we need to put that to split phase, set this one as master, and then we'll do the same thing over here on this screen and we'll put split phase and we'll set this one to slave and then close out. So that is split phase and this is split phase. Let's close out of that screen. Now we have a connection between the two. The next cable you're gonna need is these two will plug into your AC2 and your AC1. Because we made this the master, I'm gonna call that AC1. So I'm going to plug these into this right here and then into this right here and then take this end and plug it into our transfer switch. Before we get this plugged in, we want to hook up our solar cable. So to charge with solar, you're provided with this solar cable. This is, comes included that you'll want to put this in here and tighten this down and do the same on the other one. Now we just need to hook solar to our inverters. And since we're at 100%, we have no PV input coming on, but we do have 109 volts. So let's go use some power. This is something you probably will not need. I just want to point it out because you're going to see this nice bright yellow <laughs> plug at the end down there and you may be wondering about it, but you're not going to need this because you're going to be hooking to a 30 amp transfer switch and I'm hooking to a 50 amp transfer switch because I had that AC 500 connected to it. And now all I need to do is turn on the AC outlets. And because this is the master, I can just do it from here. It'll automatically turn this one on uh, when the signal comes through. It's already clicked, so it's already on, but it just turned there. And you see that we have AC on both of those. Also that works if you wanna turn it off as well. So it turns off there and it will turn this off here. So you have your master that controls both of them. So let's get that turned back on. Now the last thing that I need to do is to transfer the power from the grid to the AC300s. 
And now you see that we're using 417 watts off of that side and 155 off of that side. So we're running in a uh, split phase 240 volt system currently, and that is a 240 volt 24,000 BTU mini split. And I'm currently running around 1450 watts over here and 1100 and 50 watts over here say so we're at around 2600 watts on the ac 300s and it's going to continue to run like that because i'm not just running the mini split and everything else including 25 lights in the ceiling because it's a cloudy day out we went from 700 watts of solar coming in and dropped all the way down a little bit below 100 watts we've bounced back to 170 but that's going to go in and out and that's just my short term load testing to see if this thing can handle close to 3000 watts for a continuous amount of time. And also to show you that you can use B300s on one system and B300Ks on the other system. And earlier in the video, I did mention that I was going to go over the touchscreen. So let's talk about that. If you want to turn on or off your AC or DC, you can do that from here. So we'll turn this one on and it flips this on. Now that does not control the DC over here on the slave. It only does what I did earlier when you turn the slave on or off from there, does it control the actual slave. So onto the settings, we have a bunch of different settings in here. So you'll have to configure your system to what you need it to be configured for. But I'll just kind of show you what's going on in here. Now I did set my grid uh, max input to 10 amps. This will come default to 15 but I was plugging this in on the same circuit and I had 10 amps for this one and then 10 amps for that one over here. And when you add that together, you had 20 amps and I have 20 amp plugs. So I did not want to overload the circuit. So with that said, let's move on. We have these different uh, settings. Now you could turn on or off your Bluetooth from here as well. Um, I like leaving these on because I have this connected to the app and I'll show you that in just a second. The brightness of the touch screen, you can turn up or down. You can turn off the, the touch sound and all that good stuff. And you can have this set to never, or you can set this for 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, or never. I like the screens being on all time, so I set it to never. To get back home, you can hit back several times, or you can just hit the home button. Your data kind of gives you the information about the AC300 inverter, and you go back to alarms, if you ever get an alarm, this is where it's going to be. So you'll actually see what's happening with the alarm message. Within the app, you can see the solar production. Right now, it's 194 watts. We, to the right of that, you can see the grid consumption. So what we're pulling from the grid, we're not connected to the grid. So we're not pulling anything from that. And then down on the lower left is your DC consumption. Anything you might have plugged into the front or on top of the AC 300s. And then over to the right bottom there, you'll see 1.4 kilowatts. And that is the consumption that we're pulling off of this one AC 300. Below that, you'll see the DC and the AC. That's how you turn off the actual power to those um, sections. And then below that, you'll see the pack. And the pack is your battery uh, packs that you have connected. We have two connected. We have pack three and pack four. That's just they're showing three and four right now because that's how I have them connected. But 89% state of charge on each one of those. And then kind of just your data down below. Now let's move on to the settings. Over in the settings, you can change uh, your network settings. You can actually uh, look up your user manuals and everything from here as well. So this is kind of like a self-service if you want to go that route. Uh, working mode is very important down here at the bottom. So if we click into that and we click into working mode, you can set it to standard UPS, PV priority UPS, time UPS, and customized UPS. Uh, depending on how you want to configure your system is which one you'd want to uh, select. Now I got this set in standard UPS. Let's go back and then go down to upgrade. So if you need to upgrade anything on your system, you would do it from the upgrade. So um, we can do upgrade anything here. So anytime you need upgrade, I would recommend doing that. Now let's move on back and just kind of get a last look at the home screen.